inform Michael that we have an amalgam of classes here from film production, film studies, etc. And he understands that this is a student to Michael forum. So this is, Michael has some things to say, then he will just field your questions. Before we start, I really want to thank Ted Cady over here. Ted Cady produced the event. And Ted, and Ted, and Ted, cool to have someone like Michael Moore come in and teach a class here, and I said that would be very cool. So, <laughs> Michael Moore, San Jose State. Well, geez, thank you very much. I guess I should put on the official San Jose uh, State. Yeah. All right. And I, I'm not in Michigan. I don't need this. <laughs> uh, you know, we make movies um, to be seen. Uh, not alone, first of all. Going to the movies is a communal experience. So when you're watching a movie on your computer, or worse yet, on your iPhone, <laughs> you're watching a version of a movie. You're watching a, a different rendition of that movie, but you're not watching that movie. When you're watching that movie on your computer, I don't care if you stole it or whatever. I don't, that's an that's irrelevant issue as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm more concerned with the fact that you're not watching a movie. You think you're watching a movie, you're not watching a movie. Because it is a communal experience intended by the director, by the filmmaker, by the people who work on that film, for you to see it and share it with people in that room. If you're making a film, sound is more important than picture. You know, they're called the motion pictures. Um, the audience will be very forgiving if, um, um, for some reason it's a little out of focus or the camera's moving around or whatever. You know this from going to the movies in the theater that um, if the film is slightly off on the curtain or whatever, everybody will sit there for the rest of the movie. Nobody will get up and say anything. But if the sound drops out, it's a riot in there, right? <laughs> the reason for that is that the sound carries the story. The sound carries the story, not the visual. And so too, uh, too often in film school or in film classes, um, um, we don't put enough thought into sound and the importance of sound and spending what limited funds you have on good sound and making sure the sound is, is correct, is right. But I also think that, I think what makes movies so boring and ridiculous and unwatchable uh, these days is that, uh, no, it's not so much the acting, it's the story. It's always the, the story is, you already know what's going to happen 10 minutes from now. There's no surprise. There's no, you should be on the edge of your seats watching a movie. I mean, literally on the edge of your seats, not because it's a, a thrill or a big action scene. You're on the edge of your seat because you don't know what the fuck is going to happen next. <laughs> you thought it was going to go one way, but then it went the other way. And then you're happy. You're happy that the author or the director tricked you, lied to you almost. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and, and in fact, you're not proud of yourself that you figured it out 10 minutes ago. Right? You don't sit up in your chair and go, ah, I knew that 10 minutes ago. You go, this is fucking boring. <laughs> now I know what's going to happen in 20 minutes. <laughs> when is this thing over? <laughs> you know, there, there, there's something about art in general, in my opinion, that I think is supposed to be dangerous. It's supposed to take risks. It's supposed to affect. It's supposed to rattle you. It's supposed to question your basic assumptions about life, about society, about politics, about people, about yourself. I will, there, there's a good point about sound. Because I remember the first time I saw Jurassic Park in a great theater. And the first time off in the distance you hear the hoof, <laughs> the foot of the dinosaur, and it just went through the theater. That, before you saw the dinosaur, it, you were scared shitless about what was going to happen. <laughs> and they hadn't even shown you a dinosaur. There had been no blood yet or anything. And the sound was like, it was, I just remember that moment of that first, that first boom. <clears throat> you know, the whole place just, this is not painting or sculpture, which are very singular art forms. It's just you and the clay or you and the easel. This is a collaborative art form. So you have to be able to work well and communicate well with the people that you're working with so that they can enact or help you enact your ideas. So that's, I think, very important. I think they have, a, they have to have a good sense of story um, and um, a lot of stamina and um, 
and a, a healthy amount of self-loathing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but but it's a lot of it really is the sort of willing it to happen. If you believe that you're that kind of person, you know you're just going to make this happen. And and I think if you start every day like that when you're making a film, you have a better chance than the sort of the attitude of how the hell are we ever going to do this? This is insanity. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, those of you who are going to make movies, please um, go out and make some great films. Uh, we, we need them. Um, new ways of distributing them are going to be found. The old way um, isn't working well right now, especially for new and independent and young. When I grew up, people my age and a little bit older were making all these great films. We don't get to hear enough of your voices these days. And it's not enough just to put it on YouTube. Uh, it, it, there, there's there should be something else. So I look forward to, to seeing what happens, and I'm going to hopefully contribute to that in, in some way. So please go and do your best work, whatever that work is. If you're an actor, uh, if you're a writer, if you're a journalist, um, we all need you right now. Um, we, we're, we've got ourselves in a really messed up situation. And your parents, my generation, um, haven't really handed you a very pleasant world. And, um, and so my apologies for that. Um, but hopefully, you know, you all seem like uh, very smart and energized people. So you'll come up with something that we couldn't come up with, right? Yep. And make it a better place for your kids and your grandkids. So good luck with that. And thank you very much for letting me see you.